Good morning, Shoreline. Good morning, everybody. We are so, so grateful that you're joining us for services today. It's a very unique setting. Uh, I'm looking out over our entire sanctuary, and there's We're no... missing you. <laughs> we are. We are. But we know that you're at home, uh, or you're gathered together in your family. Some of you are probably just getting out of bed. But uh, we're delighted that you're with us here today, and we just want to kind of go through what's, what's happening. As all of you know, uh, we're in a very unique season in our national history, and, uh, and so on the advice of government officials and healthcare professionals, we're now meeting uh, online as a service rather than being together. We miss being together, and so many of you have texted and let us know that you can't wait until we get back together. But in the meantime, uh, we want to have these uh, services online uh, with you. If you have a prayer request and you're watching on Facebook or, or at shoreline.net, please send it to us because we're going to be praying this morning. Uh, we're coming live from our campuses at the North Broadcast Campus, and, uh, and we want to pray uh, for the requests that you send in. So just uh, send in those requests, and uh, we're going to pray. And we'll be praying all week long with all of our intercessors uh, as well. Um, what we're going to do today is uh, Laura and I are just kind of hosting the beginning of this service, and then we're going to go to praise and worship, uh, and then I'm going to share a message with you guys. Uh, and then after the service is concluded, we have a program for our children. So just stay uh, tuned in, and the, 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 the children's program will be there for you, and it's so spectacular. In fact, last week, I thought that the children's message was even better than mine. <laughs> it was, no, it was, it was awesome. It was, awesome. it was really good. I, I want you to know, Shoreline family, you would be so proud of all of the volunteers and all of the uh, wonderful folks that are on the team here at Shoreline and what we're doing uh, with the community. Uh, we are partnering with the food bank. We are partnering with the, the, the hospitals to, to organize blood drives. Uh, our South Campus location is being used to help supply, and we're involved in this process to help supply first responders uh, all week long. Uh, we've reached out to all of the most vulnerable uh, folks in our own church family just to make sure that everybody's safe. We're doing everything we possibly can to minister to you and to your family in this unique season here at uh, Shoreline. So anyway, we're excited about today, and we're so grateful that you're a part of it. Uh, Laura, God's put something on your heart. Yeah, you know, I've talked to a couple of different friends of mine and different people that are kind of not liking this social distancing thing. I mean, like they're feeling a little bit stir crazy and, you know, they're just not wishing that they, you know, had to do this. But, you know, in fact, I've been walking our dog Mello and I'm telling you, I've been running into people in my neighborhood that I've never seen before in my life. I just, I, I, I don't know where these people are coming from, but I'm telling you, everybody is feeling a little bit isolated. And maybe today you're feeling isolated. Maybe you're feeling alone. Maybe you're feeling lonely. I just want to reassure you today that there is one thing that you absolutely can never be isolated from, and that is God's love. That's so beautiful. God's love. Romans 8 verse 38 says, and I am convinced that nothing can separate you from the love of God. It says neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor fears of the present, nor beautiful. worries about the future. Not even the powers of hell can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And so I just want you to remember today that nothing can isolate you, nothing can distance you or disconnect you from God's love. And you know, it might be something else that's going on in your life that's making you feel a little shaken or fearful or worried or concerned. Perhaps you have some family members that you're um, going through difficulties with, maybe a marriage that's going through a struggle. Perhaps you've got financial insecurity. Gosh, we're all feeling that way. We don't know what the future holds. You know, maybe you're having some other illness in your physical body or this coronavirus thing is just really bringing fear. It's making you feel um, afraid or isolated in any way, whatever it is. Listen, you might not be able to get your hands on some toilet paper or some cleaning products, but what you can always get your hands on is God's love. His so love good. never fails. It never ends. It is surrounding you. It is filling you. His love lives on the inside of you because Jesus lives on the inside of you. And you know what? He is love. God is love. And you are the object of his love. And so today, be assured absolutely nothing can isolate you or separate you from the love of God. You know, some of the prayer requests that we received just this morning, uh, Diane uh, 
is just needing strength to get through this um, pandemic. You know, all of us need that, right? Uh, Barbara um, has a daughter that is uh, no longer uh, working since the schools have closed. And so we just need to pray for that situation. How many others have been affected that way? Uh, Carolyn uh, needs a prayer for the family uh, to be completely recovered. Um, Candy uh, has a husband uh, in in uh, and, and I guess the whole family that's in Nigeria, and they're really dealing with the coronavirus, and they need uh, prayer. Deborah and Julio and Flora and Tamara. So let, let's pray. Laura, you mentioned people might be feeling isolated. Let's pray for our whole church family because there's tons of needs represented there. And I'm going to lay hands on these requests uh, as you, well. Father. And, and you, more prayer requests are coming in uh, all the time. I just want you to know uh, we have an intercessory prayer team that's going to be praying for all of these requests all week long. So please connect with us, and we're just going to trust God to do miracles. Amen. Oh, Father, we love you. We come before you and thank you that you're a God who hears our prayer. Thank your you, word Father. says that we're two or more gathered in your name. Here you are in our midst, and whatever we ask is touching anything, it shall be done. We know there's no distance in prayer. Father, that you are a God who hears us, who sees us, and who answers prayer. Father, your love is never failing and never ending. And Father, we're asking that you would touch each one of these prayer requests that are coming in Thank this you, morning. Father. Father, those that are unmentioned. Father, those that are sitting in their home watching. Father, and are just simply afraid. Father, are feeling isolated. God, all the different things that are going on in our lives on top of dealing with this crisis, we ask that you would calm yes, and touch and heal and free and bring wholeness to every single one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we have worked uh, incredibly hard all week long to bring this service to you. So we want to encourage you to engage. So uh, we're going to go into our time of worship. If you want to stand and join us, please do. But let's worship the Lord together. Good morning, Shoreline. Thank you for tuning in. I know that this is not the typical way that we do worship, but I'm so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you're here. Let's just dive in. Let's give God the best that we have. Lift your hands, stand up, sing. Let's just go in, all right? Amen.
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Oh, the Lord.
Hey Shoreline family, this is Pastor Pete. I serve as the campus minister at our Hutto campus. I also work with the small groups program here at Shoreline North. And we are so glad that you've come and experienced this with us on this particular Sunday. You know, we are in a, such a unique season of life in the world today. And we are gathering together around the community using and leveraging technology. And I know for some of you, that's a totally new experience. And so I wanna just encourage you to engage the experience as if you were in the sanctuary with us. So when we read the Shoreline Creed, stand and read it aloud. When we're singing the songs, join in. When pastor begins preaching, pull out your notebook, take notes. This is a great way for us to encounter God through the marvelous miracle of technology. And I guarantee you, if you engage it at that level, God will speak to you in a personal and profound way. I also wanna say a special welcome to our guests who are joining us online. Thank you for taking the risk to be a part of this. I know for many families, this is like the moment in the week that they've most needed and they need to hear from God. They need to be encouraged and uplifted. And I promise you that will happen for you today. In fact, if you want to take a moment and just fill out our guest card online, we'd like to personalize that welcome and let you know that we are so grateful that you are here with us in these hours. We want to be mutually encouraging of one another, and I hope you'll take advantage of that. If you're watching on our social media platforms, just go to shoreline.net and find the guest card online. We'd love to connect with you personally. You can also share a prayer request at that time. I also want to invite you in light of what's happening in the world at large, you know, we've been meeting all week as a staff and key volunteers to talk about how the church can meet the unique needs of this hour. We've been in touch with our international partners. We've been in touch with local agencies. We've been thinking about ways in which we can be the church at this hour. In fact, as Pastor Rob reminded us last week, historically, when things are really rough in the culture or in the world, it's then when the church steps up and provides the witness of Christ, the love of Christ, the resources of Christ to meet the needs of the world. So I wanna invite you to be generous, even with your giving online. You can do that by texting 77977 and use the word Shoreline North in that text and follow the prompts and you can be a part of being a great church in an hour of great need. In fact, as we do so, the Bible promises that as we give generously, the Lord gives back generously to us. And I wanna to pray toward that end even now. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are faithful. You never change. You are the God that we can count on yesterday, today, and forever. And so in these moments, as we entrust our finances to you to do what only you can do in this season, would you bless the gift and the giver alike to your honor and to your glory. And it's in your name that we pray, amen. Now let's engage fully with Pastor Rob as he preaches. We are so glad that you are a part of our uh, services today. I want to extend a really warm welcome to every one of you who are watching online from around the country and around the world. We welcome you to our campuses here in Austin, Texas. And then we're in a unique season. Of course, we're not meeting on our campuses, but I do want to identify the Shoreline South Congregation, the Shoreline Hutto Congregation, the Shoreline North Congregation. We love you, we love you, we love you. And we're so glad that you're a part of our church community. Uh, we know that you know some of you are uh, just getting up out of bed. Maybe some of you have already had your breakfast and uh, there's lots of different places where you might be today. Uh, and we thank you for tuning in, but we're gonna do something that's familiar to most of you. We're gonna do our Shoreline Creed. So come on, everybody, stand up, get out of bed, step away from the kitchen table. Let's, uh, let's focus in on the beauty of what these words uh, represent. Okay, you guys ready? I am loved by God. I cannot earn it, I cannot lose it. I am forgiven and made brand new. In Christ, I live with passion and purpose. I am empowered by the Spirit to be the church in the world and to live this love revolution. Come on, right where you are, let's give God praise for that. It's a beautiful reminder that Christianity is all about grace. Uh, you know, when people go through difficult times, some, some people get frustrated, some people get angry, some people get quiet. 
And, and some people try to find uh, humor in the midst of, of difficult circumstances. I was reading about one guy, you know, who couldn't watch sports, right? And so he said, the first night uh, without sports, my wife and I had an hour long conversation. Apparently, she works in the medical field and she's a pretty nice lady. You know, we can find some, some, uh, some silver lining in the midst of the storms, can't we? And that's what I really wanna to talk to you about here this morning. I wanna to talk to you about storms. And, and you know, I had a, a, a series of messages that I had outlined for this particular season in our church. I've scrapped them all. And every single week I am now, you know, kind of engaging what I feel like God wants to, 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 to communicate to you in this particular season. And, uh, and, and today I felt really uh, led to talk to you about storms. Uh, storms weren't foreign to Jesus. I mean, he, he was uh, involved in storms and he, and, he, and he had experience with storms. And in fact, one of my favorite stories is found in Matthew chapter eight, starting in verse 23 and going to verse uh, 26. Let's read along together. If you've got your Bibles, you can open it, uh, use your phone or, or uh, just follow here on the screen. Listen to what uh, this story says. Then he got into a boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And he replied, oh, you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. I love this story. We're going to kind of unpack it together here this morning and and maybe find what God wants to speak to our hearts. You know, that, that first word that comes to me is the, is the word suddenly. Suddenly a furious storm came. Man, doesn't that describe exactly what has taken place in our own country? Just two weeks ago, the coronavirus was like a, a thought in the you know, back recesses of our minds. It was something that was affecting other nations and other parts of the world. We never had a thought that it would affect us here. And then almost suddenly, it's at our doorstep. And then, you know, the first huge announcement, South by South by, was canceled. And then, you know, within a couple of days of that, they made an announcement that nobody could gather together in groups of 250 and then they reduced that down to 50 and now it's down to 10 and lightning quick we had to to reconfigure how we do church um, all of that was happening you know uh, last weekend and so on friday now uh, we were working tirelessly and furiously to find ways to to bring ministry and 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 to bring inspiration and worship to you and, uh, and so our, our creative team and, and all of the folks involved with our, with our uh, editing and film work and all of that worked 48 straight hours to bring a uh, ministry to you. And, and, and now we're you know, kind of getting our, our sea legs a little bit and trying to figure out how this is gonna unfold as we, as we walk through this particular storm. But I gotta tell you, it hit us suddenly. And that might, might be exactly how you were feeling about this whole situation. Maybe you had plans for spring break. Maybe you had a family thing that you were gonna do. Maybe uh, you, know, you had some, 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 some exciting opportunities to, to experience and, and, and all of a sudden, everything started shutting down. Uh, maybe you were just cruising along. Maybe life was good. Uh, maybe you know, things were, were, were happening uh, in a way that, that brought you joy and then suddenly, everything changed. Suddenly the schools started to close. Suddenly stores started to you know, reduce their hours. Suddenly travel is discouraged. Suddenly restaurants you know, are, are things that you can't go to uh, anymore. And what Jesus was trying to communicate to us is that storms do come. Sometimes life is sunny. Sometimes life is bright. Sometimes the, you know, the seas are calm and the fishing is good. But sometimes storms come. In John chapter 16 and verse 33, listen to what Jesus said. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Listen to what he says. It's really important. In the world, you're going to have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. 
What, what Jesus is basically saying here is, hey, if you're going to live in the world, you're going to go through seasons where life gets a little bit difficult, where there is some trouble. That's going to happen. You don't have to pray about those things happening. You don't have to confess them in order for them to happen. You don't have to believe God for them. Uh, the truth is, is that trouble is going to come in each and every one of our lives. The good news is that we can have the peace of God in the midst of it. The good news is that we can overcome the storms that come our way, but we got to recognize that storms do come. And right now, our whole country is facing a storm. And it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. And it doesn't matter what your financial status is. It doesn't matter if you're famous or even if your mother doesn't know your name. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian. This is a storm that all of us are experiencing together. Jesus said, in this world, you're gonna have some trouble. But here's the thing about storms. They don't last forever. They don't. The truth is that we can't avoid the storms when they come, but they will not last if we don't quit. Don't quit and you will not fail. If you feel today like you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep on going. You're going to get to the other side. It seems like the Apostle Paul was going through one trial after another. He was certainly facing some storms. He was in prison. He was beaten. He was shipwrecked. But listen to what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. He said, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Listen to this. He described all of his trials and and beatings and imprisonment and, and the storms that he was going through. He described them as light and momentary troubles that are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Man, that's the attitude that we need to adopt. Yes, we're going through some difficult times. Yes, we're going through a storm. But in light of God's power and in light of God's goodness, they are momentary and insignificant in light of all that God can do in and through us. It may take a while, but God will get you out of the storm. And you know what? In the meantime, he's going to take the storm out of us. That's what he does. So what do we do when the storms come? How can we have the right perspective? Well, I think this verse opens up some opportunity for us to see exactly what we need to do. All of us here, Shoreline North, Shoreline South, Shoreline Hutto, those of you who are watching online, I really want you to pay close attention to what we do in the middle of the storm. The first thing, and maybe most obviously, turn to Jesus. That's exactly what the disciples did. They were in the boat. The winds and the waves were crashing and they went to Jesus. They woke him up. Smart move. And we can do the same exact thing. I got to tell you, the truth is, one of my biggest concerns about this whole you know, situation is that when people get disconnected from gathering together as God's people, they're not reminded and encouraged to turn to Jesus. It seems like most of us in the daily routine of our spiritual journey will come to church and when times are good, we come to church and we give God praise and thanks for all the good things he's done in our lives. And when times are difficult, when the storms come and they come to all of us, right? We come to church and we're reminded to get our eyes off of us and off of our, uh, off of our, our circumstances and to fix our eyes on Jesus. We're reminded to do that. I'm, I'm concerned in this particular season of time that, that the devil would love to sever you from your relationship with Jesus, that you might feel isolated, that you might feel alone. I want to encourage you that God is in your boat. You are not alone. Jesus is in your boat and the truth is we're in your boat with you. And we're going to do everything we possibly can. 
with the technology that we have available, with the wisdom that God gives us as we pray and seek the Lord together. We're going to do everything we can to remind you and to help you to turn to Jesus in the middle of the storm. When the storm comes, the first temptation is always to run. And I want to encourage you, don't run. Don't run away. Turn to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, one of the finest verses you're going to read, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. You know, when the disciples turned to Jesus, you know what Jesus did? He got up in the bow of that boat and he spoke to the winds and he spoke to the waves and he said, peace, be still. And as suddenly as the storm came, the peace of God ruled and reigned in their circumstances. And I want you to know that Jesus will speak to the storms in your life. He'll speak blessing where there is lack. He'll speak healing where there is sickness. He'll speak provision where there is a need. He'll speak forgiveness where there is guilt. He'll speak peace to where there is fear. That's something I got to learn to do in my own life is just to remind myself that Jesus is in my boat. Every single day I need to, to come to that awareness and come to that reality. You know, I have the opportunity to to hear this particular message and, and uh, I'm, I'm watching it alongside all of you and, and, and I'm reminding myself as I'm reminding you that turning to Jesus is the most important thing that we can do. I receive encouragement from that and I hope you will be blessed as well. So the first thing we do is we, we turn to Jesus and then the second thing we're encouraged to do is to remain steadfast in our faith. When the disciples turned to Jesus in the boat, he reminded them of the importance of faith. He did it when he encouraged them and challenged them and said, oh, ye of little faith. He was reminding them that faith is critical, that faith is important. He did it in such a way that he said, you know what? When you're in a boat in the middle of the storms, you can speak to those storms too. Not only will Jesus speak to the issues that you're facing in your life. He's encouraging us with faith in God to do the exact same thing. I love the story of young David when he was facing Goliath and, and uh, he was just had this kind of brashness to him. He had this, this sense of destiny to him and, uh, and he, he had some courage on the inside that was fueled by his faith in God. And even though he was small and Goliath was, was, was big, even though he was relatively weak and Goliath was so strong, David had faith in God. And he looked at that Goliath and he said, you come against me in the sword and the spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he said, today I'm going to cut off your head and feed your carcass to the birds of the air. He had a tenacity and a boldness about him. And I want to encourage you in the middle of your storm, in the middle of this virus, in the middle of this season, that we would adopt the same kind of attitude. That we wouldn't complain to God about how big our mountains are. That we would speak to our mountains about how big our God is. That we wouldn't whine and complain about how big the storm is raging. That we would speak to the winds and speak to the waves in the name of Jesus and with the same confidence, trust that God is going to bring our storms to rest. Rebuke the fears and rebuke the panic. Speak to your circumstances. Speak life and hope. I love the verse, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4 that says, This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Our faith in God is significant. Our faith in God changes things. Our faith in God can speak to the mountains in our life and cast them into the sea. When you read the Bible and you think about what faith in God did, 
faith in God helped Noah to build an ark. Abraham to become the father of many nations. Moses to part the Red Sea. David to defeat Goliath. Daniel to defeat the lions in the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to endure the fiery furnace. And you know what? When you speak to your storms and you speak to your mountains and you speak to your Goliaths, you can have the same victory. So in the middle of the storm, let's turn to Jesus. In the middle of the storm, let's keep our faith strong. And in the middle of the storm, let's keep our joy. Keep our joy in the midst of the battle. In James chapter 1 and verse 2, I love this verse 2. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Now that's got to be counterintuitive, isn't it? That, that, that can't be right. That can't make any sense. That can't be in the Bible, but it is. Consider it pure joy when you face trials. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 gives us the reason why. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. I know that, you know, social distancing and social isolation is all the rage. And it's, it's important for us to, to abide by what our uh, community leaders are telling us about uh, so, so that we can reduce the spread of this particular virus. But you know what? Even in the midst of this time frame where it seems like life is difficult and everything is upside down and we're so unsure about what's taking place, let's not lose our joy. Find some friends to connect with, even if it's by text or just to go for a walk together in the park or to play some golf or to ride some bikes. Don't allow the circumstances to isolate you from the joy that comes from friendship and relationship. And one of the biggest reasons to find joy in the midst of the trial, let's read on here in James chapter one, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you will be mature and complete, lacking nothing. The Bible says that trials are a test to your faith. And what do tests do? They, they kind of reveal the condition of your faith. If you go through a trial and your heart is decimated by fear and panic and anxiety, then maybe that's an indication that your faith is in poor condition. But if you go through a trial and you experience peace and calm and joy, then maybe that's an indication that your faith is in good condition. How we view our trials is really important. Even as a nation, even as we go through this whole trial of this virus that's among us. How we, how we process it, how we think about it is vital. If you have a positive view, that this is a test. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm going to draw closer to Jesus. I'm going to better uh, develop the relationships around me. I I'm going to have stronger friendships. I'm, I'm going to be stronger in my relationship with God. The enemy is toast and I'm going to get a testimony at the end of it. If that's your attitude and if that's your mindset, man, that's a beautiful thing. Joy will come. But if you have a negative view You'll find yourself descending into why me, life is hard, faith doesn't work, this trial will destroy me, our country's never going to be de the same, I'm depressed. Listen, your perspective makes all the difference in the world. Two different types of people go to the health club. One goes to work out, to develop muscle, to get heart strength, to get in good shape. But then there's another person that goes to the health club. And this is the person that goes in a little casual. They're just going to look in the mirror. You know, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're going to take a little steam bath. You know, they're, they're there for social reasons. They're just going to meet some folks, that kind of a thing. If you add weight to the first person, he's going to say, thank you. Thank you for increasing my weight. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to get better. He, he loves it because it's helping him to become the person he wants to be. You add weight to the second person and they're going to say, what the heck are you doing? I'm here to relax. You know what? I believe with all of my heart that Shoreline is filled with weight room Christians, not steam room Christians. I believe with all of my heart that there are people in our church family that have a positive view of the trials that they're experiencing. That it's 
It's producing something good. The testing of your faith that produces perseverance. If you have the right attitude and the right perspective, even in the middle of the storm, God can make you better. He can shape your life to be the person that he's always wanted you to be, to be the very person that you have always wanted to be. So let's turn uh, to Jesus. Let's, let's remain steadfast in our faith. Let's keep our joy in the midst of the battle. And let me just close with this final thought. Let's remember that God works all things out for good. The disciples went through the storm and got a clearer picture of who Jesus was. They were amazed and they were in awe. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, Romans chapter eight and verse 28. I put all my favorite verses in this message. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You know what? In the middle of the storm, it didn't look good at the time, but when Jesus calmed the storms and Jesus worked the miracle, the disciples understood and had a clear picture of how magnificent their God was. You know what? God's gonna calm this storm. God's going to see you through. God is going to both see you through the storm and take the storm out of you. And when that's all said and done, you're going to know him better. You're going to have confidence in the future. You're going to have stronger family and you're going to see all the silver lining in the clouds. You're going to see all of the beauty in the midst of the storm. One time my mom, when I was growing up, was making a pillow out of needlepoint. And she used to do that and she was good at it. And she would just make these incredible designs. On the underside of the needlepoint, man, it was messy. It was really messy. All kinds of crisscrossed yarn and all kinds of colors that didn't make any sense whatsoever. But if you turn it on the other side, there was this beautiful scenery, this beautiful picture that would unfold. The truth is, when you look on the underside, there's lots of things that don't look so good. But we're called by God. We are loved by God. And he's taking all of these cross stitches, all of these different colors, all of these different messes, all of these circumstances that seem out of control, and he's turning it around and creating something beautiful in your heart, in your life, in your family. You've heard me say this before if you've been a part of Shoreline. If it's not good yet, God's not done yet. And I believe that God is going to work everything out for good. Could I hear a good amen? All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you that even in the midst of the storms of life, we can turn to you and trust you to meet every single need. Father, I thank you, Lord, that if we turn to you and keep our faith strong, if we consider it all joy in the midst of the battle, Father, if we, if we look to you in the midst of all of the challenges, in the midst of all of the storms, Father, if we recognize that you're a God who works all things out for good, Father, if we would embrace that, Lord, not only will you see us through the storm, you'll take the storm out of us. We trust you to do that, God, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, Pastor Pete, I don't know about you, but that was an incredible message. Thank you for tuning in to today's service. I so needed it. In fact, maybe you find yourself thinking, I'm in the midst of a storm and I'm not sure that Jesus is in my boat. We want to give you an opportunity to just receive Christ even now. It's just a matter of praying a short prayer. In fact, if you'll follow after me, you can make sure that you know Christ in the middle of the storm. So bow your head, pray with me, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross. I receive your grace as sufficient for the covering of my sin. I give myself to you and the new life that you promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Amen. In fact, if you are watching as a guest, we hope that you'll take a moment to fill out the guest card. If you'd like to participate financially, if you've gotten something from this experience, we encourage you to, to text Shoreline North to 77977. Yeah, and in fact, to stay up to date on everything happening for Shoreline, make sure you go to the website, shoreline.net, or engage on our social media platforms, uh, Facebook or Instagram, just look up Shoreline Church. In fact, that's gonna be really important because since we're not meeting in our facilities around Austin area, that's gonna be the way to stay up with all the things happening at our congregation. Yeah, well, and I just wanna encourage you to, uh, after this, following right now, we have a special kids program just for you. And Pastor Pete, last week was <laughs> phenomenal. So yeah. kids, we know that all of you are in for a treat. Also, for those of you that have any questions, comments, concerns, even prayer requests for what's going on uh, today, we just wanna encourage you to email us prayer at shoreline.net and we'll make sure to get back to you as soon as we can. Amen. Other than that, we just want to close out the service with the blessing. It comes to us out of Numbers chapter 6. It says, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. God bless you, Shoreline. Have a fantastic rest of your week and we'll see you next Sunday. kids. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about worshiping God out loud. Why are you so loud? Because I'm talking about God. Oh, well why? Because especially in the hard times, we can worship God out loud. And it's been a very hard week. It's been pretty stressful. Yeah, I actually have a verse. You do? Yeah, would you like to hear it? Yeah. All right. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Psalms 150 verse 6. I like that. Hey kids, do you want to repeat it with us? Yeah. Ready? Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Psalms 150 verse 6. That was mm. good. But I think we can be louder. I think they can be way louder. How loud? So loud you'll make your mom go crazy type of loud. That's pretty loud. Let's try it. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Psalms 150 verse 6. That was wow. Good. That was awesome. I think the neighbors heard. Me too. All right. Bye, Mom. Bye. Hey kids, welcome back to Shoreline Kids TV. Do you know what time it is? It's Bible story time. That's right, our Bible story today is about Jesus. I love Jesus! Our Bible story is out of the book of Luke today and it talks about Jesus coming to the town of Jerusalem. They were gonna celebrate Passover. Passover what? No, just, just Passover. Passover who? No, it's just called Passover. <laughs> It's a celebration where God's family would get all together and celebrate how God saved them all the way back in Egypt. They'd have special food and gather all together. And when Jesus was coming into the city, people were lining up on the streets and they were shouting praises to him. Like, two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Jesus! <laughs> it might have sounded like that, but they actually had a special word for him. They would shout, Hosanna! I have a friend named Hannah. <laughs> No, no, Hosanna. Oh, Hosanna. Which means God save us. They would shout out Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. And they were so happy to see Jesus. But not everyone was excited that Jesus was there. Who wasn't excited to see Jesus? The Pharisees of the time who were in charge of the temple didn't even believe that Jesus was the son of God. They would tell him, hey, what are you doing? You need to tell all these people to stop praising you. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, if I told these people to stop, even the rocks along the street would start to cry out. Wow, that's really powerful. I love that story so much. It really shows us that no matter what, we can always worship God out loud. Mr. Michael, that story reminds me of the project that we're gonna do today. Yes, I love projects. Are we gonna build something or blow something up? No, we're not gonna blow anything up. But you know what, kids? You can do this project at home too. All you'll need is a piece of paper. Okay. You can decorate it if you'd like. Wow, those are awesome colors. Well, what are we gonna do with this piece of paper? Well, we're gonna use this piece of paper to praise God out loud. <laughs> um, Miss Emily, I don't really think you can use a piece of paper to praise God out loud. Sure we can. We're just gonna roll the piece of paper up into a cone. Okay. What was that word that we learned today? That's right, our special word today is Hosanna, which means God save us. All right, so we're gonna roll our piece of paper up 
and then we're just gonna use it. And you can say whatever you want to praise God out loud. Are you ready? All right, let's give it a try. Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh. oh my goodness, that, that is super loud. And I can't wait to see y'all's videos of what you're gonna do and how you're gonna use your megaphone to worship God out loud. That's right, follow us at Shoreline Kids ATX and post your video of you praising God out loud. I can't wait. Awesome. Mr. Michael, would you like to go make one with me? Oh no, I'm good. Are you sure? I always have my own. Thanks for watching Shoreline Kids TV! <laughs> we can use our voice at a high volume to declare who God is and what God's doing in our world and in our life today. It's an amazing opportunity, even in hard times. But I wanna share with you that it's not just with your voice that you can get loud. You can get loud with your hands. The opportunity to do things that praise God are, is huge in times like this. Things like washing your hands, taking care of yourself, taking care of your family. Maybe you have younger siblings. Maybe you have opportunities to do things in your home that help. Helping is praising God out loud. It's so important for us to praise God in a loud way, both with our voice and with our hands. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you that today we have the opportunity to praise you out loud. I pray that you would give us opportunities that we can recognize, where we can sing, we can dance, we can do what we can do to bring glory and honor to your name and bring focus to you and not on the things that are around us in this world today. So Lord, we're looking forward to receiving from you, to hearing from you, and to walking with you every single day. Amen. Don't forget, we're going to be back with more stuff on Shoreline Kids TV. We're here, and we are praising God out loud.